Hi, this is Katie with Music Mastery, and in this fundamental video, I will be covering the breathing, embouchure, and articulation techniques that are necessary to play the bassoon. So first of all, let's talk about breathing. You should be pretty good at breathing by now, but um, breathing to play the bassoon or any other wind instrument is going to be slightly different and is going to take a little bit more consideration. Um, posture is going to be very important when it comes to breathing and getting a full proper breath. So I encourage you to check out the video about posture if you haven't seen it already. So we're gonna sit with our backs straight, but natural, our feet flat on the floor. The way you wanna breathe when you play bassoon is kind of like yawning. Um, when you yawn, your mouth makes kind of like an O shape, and when you inhale, the air is going to expand to this low spot at your stomach. And that's what we want when we play bassoon. You don't want to be breathing upwards where you see your shoulders raising if you look in the mirror because that is going to give you more of a shallow breath. You can ensure that you're getting a deep full breath from your stomach muscles by placing one hand on your stomach and taking the breath in. When you inhale, you should see this hand sort of move outwards as your stomach expands and then when you exhale, it will go back in like this. These abdominal muscles are going to be what you use to blow your air through the instrument and properly support your sound. Um, you don't have to blow too hard when you're playing the bassoon, you just want to make sure that you can feel these muscles engaged and basically almost flexed as you blow. Next I want to talk about a good bassoon embouchure. So unlike a single reed embouchure, the bassoon embouchure requires both your top and your bottom lips to be covering your teeth basically acting as a cushion for the reed. Um, you also want to think about your lips as being similar to a drawstring bag. So when you close a drawstring bag, it's going to sort of draw into the center area from all sides. And just like that, your lips should be giving your reed 360 degrees support. So to get this all around effect, you want to make sure that the corners of your mouth are engaged. Um, you don't want to be biting at all, so from top to bottom. Um, but rather supporting from all sides. Next, everybody's face and mouth anatomy is slightly different, so this may not work or be necessary for everybody, but it's just something to think about. Um, the majority of people have an overbite where their top teeth are over their bottom teeth, and this idea is often applied to the bassoon embouchure where the top part of it should be ever so slightly closer to the first wire, so more forward than the bottom like this. Um, with your bassoon embouchure, you don't want to be too tense or being putting too much pressure on the reed. Again, your lips are just there to support it. Um, so try putting your lips almost all the way up to the first wire and blow, and you should hear a crazy sound like this. This is called a crow, and it should have a variety of pitches in it and sound kind of crunchy. Um, it's a good indication that you're using a proper embouchure and that your reed that you have is functioning pretty decently. Um, you don't want the crow to be a single pitch, whether it's too low from lack of air or embouchure support, like this, or too high and whiny from a too firm embouchure like this. Always aim for that crunchy, buzzy middle sound, so practice this on your reed until you get it. Okay, so now let's switch gears and discuss articulation. Articulation refers to the start of the note and involves your tongue. There's three steps to articulating, so if this were your reed and this were your tongue, you first prep your air, so you take a breath like we talked about, and then you place your tongue on the reed. Um, I like to have the point just behind the tip of my tongue touch the reed, and it's going to touch the underside tip like this. Um, at this point in the articulation process, your air should be activated as if you were trying to play a note. Um, so the tongue on the reed is what is preventing the sound from actually starting yet, but if you were to lift it, it would the air and the sound would be there. Um, lastly, you release your tongue, not too far back, or you'll run into speed issues later, but just ever so slightly back to allow airflow through the reed. 
This sounds like a lot, but it's actually a very quick process. Um, your tongue and your air work together, so almost think of this process like turning on a faucet, where your air is the water, so just like in a faucet, it's already built up and ready to go, even if you haven't turned it on. And then when you open the valve or you remove your tongue from the reed, um, releasing that pressure, you're gonna allow the air to go through and produce sound. Um, your embouchure and your air should not change during this process when you're tonguing. It should be steady and the same whether your tongue is on the reed or not. When you pull your tongue off the reed, the sound should begin immediately. So first, you should try this on just your reed. Um, you can go through the steps really slowly at first, like this, prep, tongue, release. So let me demonstrate. Also, um, when you articulate multiple notes in a row, um, you're not going to need that first step where you're prepping air because you're already going to have air on reserve from your initial breath. So that process of articulating multiple notes in a row is basically just tongue oriented where all you're doing is touching the tongue on the reed and releasing quickly like this. My amateur is not moving at all. So when you feel comfortable articulating on the reed, you can move to trying it on the reed and the vocal. Um, so you're gonna have a slightly different feel. And then you can move to the bassoon. Ultimately, the more you practice, the faster you're gonna get at um, being able to execute the articulation process and the less you're gonna have to think about it. That's it for this video. If you're enjoying these videos, make sure to encourage other members of your band or ensemble to join musicmastery.band so that everybody can master their parts. Remember, you get three requests per month as a member, so keep practicing and we look forward to helping you master your next piece of music.